you guys would like to get a little wave from Jimmy Waddell himself. That was him getting ready in the 1932 Bendix Trophy race. I showed Roscoe in an earlier episode and I figured I'd just give Jimmy some airtime as well. In this episode, we're going to mount the electric motor and the cowl, and we're going to paint and mount the dummy radial engine and then show you what that all looks like when put together. Before we get started, we're going to go back to the Crawford Auto and Aviation Museum in Cleveland, Ohio, and show you some real footage of the real NR61Y, and then we'll head over to the bench and get to work. I just wanted to share some of these close-up shots of the real NR61Y's cowl and engine. And in this case, it's the Pratt & Whitney Hornet, which was not what was on the red line in 1932, but it's what's on it now as it sits in the museum. So let's go ahead and get started with mounting the electric motor. If you look at the firewall, there's those four dark squares. Those are hard points in the firewall. And using the OS60CC template, those four holes line up perfectly with the existing four holes on the round motor mount. And you can see here, I actually test fit the motor and those four mount holes on this piece line up perfectly with the holes in that template. So we'll use this template, drill holes into those hard points and go from there. Now remember, these long bolts are going to be utilizing blind nuts on the back of the firewall so while i'm drilling the right size hole right now we're going to go back through and enlarge it just enough so the blind nut has space to pull back in and grip on the back of the firewall you can see lined up perfectly with those hard points So this is how I'm going to seat those blind nuts. I'm going to actually take the, the bolts that we're using, the long bolts, and make sure I'm using washers and the long standoff. And I'm going to reach back and pull the blind nut through. So I have the blind nut in my right hand, and I'm just going to start setting, tightening it just so it grips that wood, just so it begins to start seating, and then I'll torque it down with a lot of force. I'm just make sure that you're using your washers here because you don't want to damage those hard points. And if you use the exact bolts and the standoffs, then that's just going to help that blind net sit as straight as possible as it pulls into the back of the firewall. We'll just show doing the first blind nut and we'll skip ahead to the next step, which is where we're actually going to mount the round motor mount disc. And we already had these bolts out, so we'll seat these using a small lock washer and then a large washer on the front. And then we'll put some of the spacers here, the long standoff, and then another washer, spacer or washer, depending on. And that's where this is gonna be a little bit of a trial and error. You're going to have to, don't tighten this stuff down. Don't use blue Loctite yet because you're gonna to have to play with these spacers to find what, what orientation of spacers and washers to get the motor at the right distance away from the firewall so it sits nice and flush the way you want it along with the dummy radial engine. It's it's odd because there's a few variables. You have to mount the cowl itself and you'll have to glue the dummy radial in there so there's a lot of variables and it's really up to you to kind of do some test fitting and find what fits right for you. So again I will go back through all these bolts and put blue Loctite after I find the right configuration of spacers so I can get the motor sitting exactly where I want it. The 
for the dual sky, you see I used blue painter's tape to make a center point because I needed to rotate the, the mounting holes for the motor just about 10 degrees because they didn't match up quite with the existing holes in that round motor mount. So that's why that center is covered. So here we will mount the motor using the short standoffs that come with the kit. Again, you have the shorter bolt, another small lock washer, a large washer, the small standoff, and then this is where you start getting, do you use some spacers here? Uh, make sure you definitely use at least a small washer against the wood to protect the wood. And the motor is mounted. And again, nothing's really too tight because I will probably take the motor off a few times to get the spacing right. And obviously you see I haven't soldered the motor connections yet, so the motor's gonna have to come off for that as well. So here's a close up of, I got the prop on. And in fact, I wanted to show you just in my case, I needed to use two extra spacers right in the center of the screen. And I'll zoom in uh, just to get the motor about another quarter inch out. Uh, it worked well for me. You can't move too far, far out because then the thrust angle of the firewall is gonna put it off center. And then, you know, you can you can accommodate that a little bit with the cow, but to a point, then the cow is gonna start looking uh, a little off-centered if you go too far. So here is the dummy radial engine out of the box, and I wanted to show it before I started cutting it, and we'll show you cutting it and painting it actually, but I really like using my old Hobbyco hot knife, which is basically a hobby knife and a soldering iron, uh, just to use the tip to go through, and if you use as little bit of the blade as possible, that cuts down on the flashing or the melting of the plastic. So take your time, just use the tip of that knife, and you can see how nice it's cutting through there. And with just using the tip, I'll speed this up, you can really go around curves nice and easy. So you'll see me, especially in this shot, you'll see I kind of go around some of the curves really nice and easy with just that tip go around and it pops off. So the first step is go through and cut off all these spaces in between the cylinders. Now we'll start with the painting. I used some black, some dark gray. I painted the cylinders a, a, a light gray and some olive drab on the distro caps. I'm actually putting some wires into the distro cap down to the center ring. And this is before, that shot was before I started with the black wash and you can see this was right after I put it on and the black wash isn't dry yet and it's nice and shiny, but I wanted to show you what it looks like going on. And this next shot will show you after it's fully dried. And in fact, this is the first time I've ever done some detailing like this. So it might look a little elementary, but I'm really happy with how it came out. And now I, as I look at it, I see I probably could have sopped up some of that black wash, especially near the rods, but I'm fine with this. I'm really happy how this turned out. It wasn't a lot of work. I was, not so happy that I wanted to do this, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now, as far as the cowl, it's it's a little hard to mount straight on because it tapers back. And I wanted to show you how I found to do it. If you put a lot of the top on at this angle and then kind of just slide it down, it goes on very easily. Now, unfortunately with this dual sky motor, I have to take the hub off to get it to clear the dummy radial, but that's just four more screws, it's not a big deal. So guys, here's a nice shot of the cowl on, the dummy radial painted up, the distro wires, I'm really proud of that. The black wash, it looks nice and dirty. The prop is on there. And now some final moving around just to get it exactly, get the cowl exactly where I want it, and then I'll go ahead and drill into the hard points to secure the cowl. Thanks for tuning in. We have, I think, one more episode where I'm gonna show you the rest of the electronics and then all of the decals and all the, just the final steps to get this ready to fly. And we will be flying it sometime in the next few months. Stick around, watch out for the next episode, and we'll talk to you soon.